Hello everyone, how are you? It's Pastor Rod Plummer here in Tokyo, Japan, and so excited to bring you God's Word today. I want to talk about a really important subject. How do we, how do we process bad memories, bad things that have happened in our lives, and, and also how do, we, how do we keep good memories alive in our life? And, and as I think about this good memories, bad memories, we've all got them. I, I'm thinking about something that happened in Japan uh, 10 years ago. It was almost 10 years ago exactly to, to this day that the big uh, earthquake happened up in what uh, they call Tohoku, northeast Japan, Sendai area. And there was about a 9.3 earthquake, one of the biggest earthquakes in the history of the world, followed by a massive tsunami. I'm sure some of you remember seeing it on TV, this, this terrible wave of destruction that, that came across so much of northeast Japan and for about 400 kilometers just wiped out houses and schools and shops and, and 20,000 people died at that time. And as, as a pastor with my wife uh, 10 years ago in Japan, we, we, we saw that and then realized that we had a big disaster and what can we do? And I remember that. I remember that moment. And then I remember how we processed that and, and we turned that, that terrible memory into action. And I really believe that there's a lot of that in the Bible. The, the, the concept of, of disaster and terrible things and then the, the response to God and what should we do and how do we do it. And so I want to talk about that today. And to help me uh, in my message, I want to talk about a young girl called Rumi. And Rumi's from Sendai, from the beach area there that was wiped out by the tsunami. And we'd like to look at her, her video now because this young woman, when that happened, was not a believer. She went on a homestay, a Christian homestay to Hawaii. Thank you to all our Hawaiian friends. And uh, she heard the gospel. She came back to Japan and, and through Lifehouse heard the gospel in Japanese and, and became a believer. And today she's a strong believer. She loves the Lord and she's had to process. So let's go to Rumi's video right now. あの、家にいたんだけど、今その母親が母親に会えないって思っなんか興味あるんじゃないって言ってくれて、それの情報をもらってすぐに見て、あ、行きたいと思って連絡をして、ハワイに あの、その英語がわからないながらに愛とか希望とか喜びとか平安とかなんかそういう単語が私の心の中にすって入ってきて気づいたら号泣してました。そのホームステイから戻ってきた後、心の中にすごい大きい穴が開いてる感覚があって
あこれって何なんだろうあこれがその人が言ってる神様の愛なのかなって思って自分でも神様っていうものを求めるようになってった。神様は私にも最高な人生用意してくれてるよっていうのを聞いていやその最高が本当に私にもあるんだったら信じてみたいって思ってイエスを信じる決断をしたでっかい穴にその愛が埋まってめっちゃこうわーって満たされたのを覚えてる<笑>神様はどんなシーズンでもいつも一緒にいてくれてもうそのチャレンジすらも神様はそのチャ困難な状況さえも神様は益としてくれるいいものにしてくれるっていう聖書箇所をめちゃくちゃあの実感することができたシーズンだったかなっていうのもすごい思う10年前の私はこの今の自分の人生なんて本当に想像できなかったこんなに自分が人生最高すごい楽しい人生生きてるとかって言ってる自分が本当に想像できなかったけどあの時その神様が言ってる人あの最高な人生っていうのを今歩めてるなっていう確信がある。Wow, what what a what a wonderful young woman of God. Hey, I just、uh, thank you, Lord, that you touch lives and you even in difficult times and even people hearing today, you'd be thinking, well, that's an incredible story and. How do we do that? How do we actually process memories? And so I'm going to talk to you about a few things, all right? Firstly, I want to talk to you from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. This is when the, the children of Israel were in the wilderness 40 years and finally entering into the promised land, Israel. At that time, they crossed a small,、uh, what was a river, but at that time was smaller, and、um, we call it a creek in Australia. And、uh, They crossed over and they took stones and put it in the middle. Let's have a look at、uh, this, this sort of unusual story, but there's a very important、uh, phrase in the middle I want to talk about. Joshua 4, verse 5 to 7. And it said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan River. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, that's the leaders, to serve as a sign among you. And in the future, when your children ask, What do these stones mean? Hey, Dad, what do these stones mean? Hey, Granddad, what do these stones mean? Hey, hey, can you explain to me, what do these stones mean? And this is a really important thing. What do stones of memories mean to us and to another generation? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones. Are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. And so I've actually called this message Memorial Stones, putting stones in our life that, that we remember. And although this is a good story and we should have our good memorial stones, I'm sure for, for Rumi and Sendai there w a s some, some bad memorial stones. But you know what? It's really important what we do with good stones and Bad stones in our life. And I just want to just, just quickly almost summarize my message. What do we do with, with,、um, with bad memories? Well, they will either define us or we will define those memories. They will define us or we will define them. And people say, What is this stone in your life? We have the chance to either be, be affected forever by that in a, in a negative way. And of course, I'm not. Undermining anyone's experience and how bad it might be. That, that's not my intention, but my intention is that people would, would see bad things and say, This is a chance for God to heal, to bless, to restore, and actually bring meaning and, and even influence sometimes in ministry and helping other people through our, through our bad memories. And good memories, well, be thankful always, the Bible says. So I remember the Rumi story. I remember being in,、um, here in Tokyo and When, when the, the earthquake and then the tsunami, and then there was a, a nuclear explosion in Fukushima、uh, nuclear plant, which almost, almost affected Tokyo. We were here in Tokyo and、uh, there was radiation coming, and it, it didn't come, praise the Lord, it didn't come into Tokyo, but it could have caused a massive apocalyptic scene here in Tokyo in 2011. 2011, that's correct, 10 years ago. And it didn't happen, but it could have happened. And, and, and then we said, well, what are we going to do to help people? And we said, well, let's, let's take some of the young people up in Sendai area and bring them into Christian 
Christian um, homestays where they're going to learn English and they're going to, um, it, it, wherever they go, they're going to be blessed in barbecues. And let's put them in Christian homes for three weeks, English teaching, uh, and, and just having a great time because these people have lost family and homes. And, and I remember back then people said to us, you will never get access to those young people. The, 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 the Japanese government will not allow that. But I want to tell you, the Japanese government was so behind our idea. It was unbelievable. In fact, one of the uh, previous prime minister's wives opened the door for those young people to get their, their passports, birth certificates back. You can imagine losing everything in a house, and including old photographs and birth certificates. And the Japanese government was so behind it. The airlines were behind it. They gave very cheap airfares for those young people. And we sent them to uh, America, uh, to Dallas. And, and they, they actually, the ones who went to Dallas were in the, um, I think it was the baseball stadium in front of all the crowd. And they presented them as our young Japanese friends. And the ones in Hawaii were taken to the beach and barbecues. And, and quite a few of those in Hawaii actually became believers in Jesus Christ during that time. It's amazing. Um, and people went to Australia, went to New Zealand, had experiences in the city and the country. It was a great time for the people who had had recent bad experiences. And I remember hearing many families prayed with them. The young Japanese didn't understand uh, English that well, didn't understand the prayer. But almost every one of them said these words. They said, we didn't understand, but we knew these people were good. And we're so thankful in the middle of our bad memories, we were able to form some good memories. And, and as a result of that, um, 300 young Japanese went into homestay. Uh, we were able to start a church in Sendai. Uh, it's still going today. Hey, Sendai, you're amazing. And uh, it was just amazing to see the world Christian uh, community come. And I remember that there was a, um, a, a meme or a, um, a, a, a picture, and it was like the Japanese flag, the, the white flag with the red center. And in the middle, it had pray for Japan. And I, I think that Japan has never had so much prayer in its history as that moment. Out of that bad experience came a lot of heartfelt, loving prayer from people like you all over all over the world. Pray for Japan. And I remember uh, there was other times, other things that happened in the world, bad things. And it's pray for Indonesia or pray for uh, Philippines and or pray whatever it is. And, 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 and we should have that response to a very bad Situation, And you know what? It forms a stone. We, we're carrying this stone and we, we put it down. It may not be a good one like the, the tsunami, but out of that, we, we're going to put on some good stones, a stone of love and, and prayer and, and care and, and, and goodness. And, 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 and come on, come on, church, come on, come on. Out of bad things, we can create quite incredible memories. And so I want to, I've got three things to talk about. What do you do with bad things? Memories. Number one is bring it to Jesus. Absolutely bring it to Jesus. And this is probably the number one reason why not only am I a believer after 41 years of, of being a Christian, but it's also why I love being a leader and a pastor these 41 years. You see, 41 years has not always been easy, but I really believe that Viv and I have brought things to Jesus. I remember the time we... Uh, we had to leave Thailand over some situations. It wasn't because of anything we'd done wrong, but we, we had to leave. And it was like a, a death of a vision experience for me. But I, I brought it to Jesus. I remember standing under the stars one night and I was actually li literally crying, saying, Lord, I'm, I would have to give up my dream for Thailand at this time in my life. And uh, I just really felt just the, the presence of God. And we went back to Australia. We were so blessed. Took over a small church that grew and flourished, and our lives were good. And uh, uh, you know, we love Thailand. Monty was born in Thailand. We we love Thai people. Uh, it, it, but but it's just something that we had to go through. And and one Peter five seven says, "Cast all your anxiety on Him, on Jesus." because He cares for you. Why would I cast it on Him? Because He cares for you. Friends, He cares for you. He cares for each one of you and your pain and your hurt and your suffering and your questions and your confusion and whatever it is from the past. Cast it or throw it is the actual Bible word, like a cast a, a net. Cast it on the Lord because He cares for you. Isn't that a great scripture? Come on. Come on. Do it right now. Just say, Lord, would you speak to me? And I would cast it on you because you care for me. The, the second thing I would say to bad memories, what do you do is I would say think deeply about them and decide 
They don't define me. I define them. They don't tell me about my life. I tell them about my life. They don't, they don't motivate me and, and, and make me make bad decisions for the future. I make good decisions with my Jesus. And I know that that has some impact, but they don't define who I am, my decisions. I define them. And let me tell you from my own life when I was, when I was eight, I obviously wasn't a, a believer there. I became a believer at the age of 19. But when I was eight, my, my mother called me into the room and said, uh, Rod, um, your father and I are separating today. And my dad left the house. And uh, I didn't see all that much of my dad for the next 11 years until I became a Christian. Uh, he was around. He, he never hurt me. And he was, he was actually a, a good person. But he just wasn't in my life at all. And that really, 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 really deeply affected my life. And I know many of you all have had the same experience. I, I, as I travel around the world, this is now not unusual. It's now very, I can't say normal, but it's very frequent that, 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 that people have these experiences. And, but I want to tell you, it did impact me. It impacted me so much that I became so angry in my teenage years that I turned to weird things, to the occult and to bad practices and to, to, to very strange things. And I'm almost embarrassed to, well, I am embarrassed to think about it. Um, and that's what God saved me out of. He saved me out of that. And, and as a young believer, and, and, and I, I received Jesus and His Holy Spirit power, and I, I knew I had to deal with that bad memory and cast it on the Lord, right? That's what I just said, cast it on the Lord. And secondly, I, I learned from the Scriptures it's, it says that um, Jesus says, Come to me, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I, I said, God, the, those, those things don't define me anymore. I'm not the little boy who lost their dad. I am now the young adult, and I have you, and I have your strength. And, and although I remember it, the power in it is going to be diminished. And I would say this to you, those who have had very um, traumatic experiences, we will always remember them. Being a believer doesn't mean we actually forget them, but it means that the power in them can be reduced as we bring things to God and we decide they don't define me. Jesus Christ defines me. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise God. Come on. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. You are born of God, born of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in us. And, and this is really a life message for me. I want to say to you, if you had that rejection experience that I had for many years, I want to tell you, they don't define us. We define them and we say, yes, that did happen. But now, but now I'm becoming secure. I'm becoming strong. I'm becoming firm because of His presence and His Word every day, journaling. And every day, God, I believe what you say about me. Those things don't define me. You, your word defines me. What an amazing, amazing God. Come on, give God a big praise. And the third thing about bad, bad memories is we have to make the right decisions to forgive and bless. Forgiveness means release. It doesn't mean feeling right about everything. It doesn't mean making the people our best friends. It means I release. So I released my dad from all that pain I had as a, a teenager or growing up. And I released my dad and, and, and I actually got with him years later. And I said, Dad, you know, I just, just released you from that. And I want to tell you that God loves you. And, and my dad became a believer at the age of 90 years old, three days before his death. And so that's an incredible story for me that the power of release and blessing and forgiveness. And although it's hard, God helps us. So if we've been through traumatic experiences, let's carry those stones and put them in our river and people will say, what's that? And we'll say, well, you know, those things happen. Like with Rumi, those things really happen. I really did lose my mom. It was traumatic. It was so hard. It was so tough. But God loves me. God was there. God has changed me. God's helped me. That doesn't define my whole future, but God defines our future, and I will bless the Lord. I, well, I, I just love this young lady, Rumi, and there's others and, uh, I could mention, but maybe for another story. But I want to tell you that this is really important, right? Really, really important that we, we know what to do with bad memories. And I want to spend a short time on good memories because it's sort of like a a no-brainer, like, yeah, 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 we, we all know that. But I, wa I want to read, uh, I just got a couple of things. Number one, is the Bible says, think on good things. Think on these things. Think 
on good things. So I remember when I received Jesus, I remember as if it was this moment. I remember it right now. And some of you may not remember the moment to receive Jesus, but you remember a healing, a blessing, a great relationship, a step forward. And you look around and you say, that was God. God brought healing. God brought blessing. God brought people, great church, the word of the Lord. And, and, and I just know that, that journaling is going to help you into keep thinking on these things. So I want to read to you a quick scripture here. It's really great. Uh, it's Philippians 4.8. Um, you should just write it down. It's just amazing. And it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Eight things. Well, they're all the same thing, aren't they? All good things. Think about these things. That means reflection. And sometimes we just need to deeply reflect on the goodness of God. There's an old saying, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. And I think that's a, the concept that even when things go wrong in our lives and, 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 and like the tsunami that happened 10 years ago and none of us enjoyed that moment, but we just know that God brought goodness. God brought goodness. And, and even some of my staff in this room right now, one of my young pastors was a, a non-Christian at the time of that tsunami um, and, and that impacted him Maybe not to become a believer, but to want to live his life for goodness. I think I can mention his name. It's Tasuke. And uh, young pastor Tasuke and Cody, the great young couple, loving God, serving God. Well, it was, it was at that tsunami that God started to poke their hearts and, and say, you're born for greatness. And then they found Jesus Christ. Well, he found Jesus Christ in that church and changed his life. And, and, you know, think about those things. Think about the moment that God protected you or saved you or changed you or healed you. Okay, number two, be thankful, stay thankful. This is a great scripture that we love. It's 1 Thessalonians uh, 5 verses uh, 17, 18. It says, pray continually. That means just on a regular basis and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Some people say to me sometimes, what's God's will for my life? I say, I can tell you, it's to give thanks in all circumstances. That may not be very satisfying, but it's very, very deep and very true that out of a thankful heart comes a great life. And the last thing I want to say about good memories is build your life and witness on them. Others are watching. Others are waiting to see, why are you a Christian, Rod? Why do you go to church? And the best answer I can give is a testimony. Well, God changed me. God healed me. God helped me. God helped our marriage. God, it's the best witness. And listen to what Psalm 78 verse 5 to 7 says. It says, He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. Teach the children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children, then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. What, I just encourage you to write down some of these verses today. These are very deep. This is very powerful about keeping great things alive. And I, I just have met some Christians that have just lost their, their passion simply by forgetting the goodness of God. And I would encourage you today to look at these scriptures and say, God, you are good. God, restore my heart. God, bring revival into my life. And as I come to a, a close today, I, I'm thinking about these memory stones. I mentioned some of mine and my, 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 my dad leaving when I was eight, and that's a bad memory. But when the age of 19, I forgave my dad. And, and I, I began to realize that God had given me a ministry to help other young men who didn't have fathers. And it's been something that's impacted my life for these 41 years that I've had the great privilege of saying to young men and young women without dads around, God is your father. God, your father is with you. Your natural father may not be, but God loves you, has a plan for your life. And of course, that's for everybody, everybody listening today. And I, I just want to finish one concept about Jesus. And it, it's a really interesting one that, that the greatest memory stone in the world is the cross of Jesus Christ. As Jesus died on that cross 2,000 years ago, that became a memory stone. People wear the little sign around their neck or, or, or on, their, on their bracelet or, or somewhere, the, the sign of the cross. 
has become a memorial stone that has changed the world. In the natural, it's changed the world into BC and AD years. This is 2021, years after the birth of Jesus Christ. It's impacted culture. It's impacted world laws about loving each other and loving your husbands and wives and and forgiving the, the message of Jesus. No doubt, it's affected the whole world. That memorial stone, but I want to tell you the memorial stone in my heart is God has changed me on the inside and He's changed you or could change you if you want to receive Him today. And I'm thinking about the cross and there's a, a, a young Bible writer called the Apostle John and he was probably the youngest of the apostles of the 12 apostles and it called the Apostle of Love later on and, and he was standing at the cross with Jesus' mother Mary. It's, the other disciples ran away but John was at the cross. He was right there in the memorial stone. And it says this in John 19, 25. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, that Jesus' mother, his mother's sister, her name is Salome, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there, he thought Jesus is obviously on the cross, he's looking down, and the disciple whom he loved, that's John, standing nearby, he said to her, woman, or mother, here is your son. And to the disciple, to John, here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple John took her, Mary, into his home. The, the, fa- the memorial stone was deep in John's life. But a couple of days later, three days later, we read at the resurrection. And I'm going to finish with this scripture, this, this final part of the, the, the memorial stone, the, the big stone of the cross and then the big stone of the resurrection. The power of God. It says here, Resurrection Day, Sunday. John 20, verse 3. So Peter and the other disciple, that's John, started for the tomb, started running. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter. That's John. John's saying, I outran Peter. I'm, I'm faster than Peter. <laughs> and he reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in, in the cave, at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him. Obviously, John saying, puffed out of condition. And John got there first and Peter comes along afterwards. But Peter goes straight into the tomb. So John came and looked in but didn't go in. Peter's slow, comes and goes straight into the tomb because that's the sort of guy he is. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Peter's he- uh, Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. And finally, the other disciple, John, who had reached the the tomb first, also went inside. What did he see? He saw the strips of linen. And he saw and he believed. Why did he believe? Well, when when the strips of of linen were there, the, 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 the strip of linen that covered Jesus' face was a separate linen. The Bible says, and it says, and that's why it was it was it was folded beautifully. It was folded. The other cloth was not folded, but the face cloth was folded perfectly. And I'm sure that John, coming from Galilee, knowing Jesus, being a carpenter, knew that at the end of the day, the carpenters who had their their handkerchiefs, at the end of the day, they would wash them and they would fold them perfectly in a certain way. And when John saw the face cloth that day folded in the Jesus way, the way that Jesus always folded a piece of cloth, he knew that Jesus was alive and it was a memorial stone and he was the first one to believe, the first one in the risen Jesus, the first one in the resurrected Jesus. John was the first one that believed in the risen Jesus. Come on. And this became a memorial stone and they tried to kill the apostle John. They tried to poison him. They tried to burn him, but he died an old man and writing other books like the book of Revelation. What a great memorial stone. You can imagine the power of God. So as I finish today, I want to say to you, bad memories, you do not define us. We define you in Jesus' name. It might be hard. It might be tough, friends. But I'm telling you the truth. Cast it on the Lord and say to Him, Lord, heal me, save me, help me, change me. These memories are meant not meant to destroy me now, but the, I will define them in Jesus' name and they could be the cornerstone of helping other people in the same situation. Whatever they are, friend, come on, let's think on the good foundation stones and even the hard foundation stones that God has brought meaning 
into our lives. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you died and rose again, the greatest memorial stones in our life. We will remember them, Lord. On the Friday, the terrible cross, that terrible, terrible foundation stone, and then the, the resurrection, the wonderful Sunday, that beautiful, wonderful memory. And together we remember, Lord. We remember what you've done in our life, what you're going to do. And I pray for healing. I pray for release. I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit as people hear this, that they're going to say, God, we throw it on you. Help us. And we'll always remember your goodness. I pray for everyone, Lord, to lift in their faith right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, everybody. Isn't he great? And right now, I think some of you would like to say, I'd like to know this Jesus in my heart. So I'm going to count to three. I'm going to ask you to get ready to receive Jesus as I pray with you. I'm going to count to three. Are you ready? Would you like to know Jesus, his forgiveness through the cross, his power through the resurrection? Would you like to know him right now? Here we go. One, God loves you. Two, would you open your heart? And three, come on, let's pray together. Jesus, I pray you come into the people's hearts. You forgive them, love them, fill them. Help them be with them from this time forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. God is good. Hey, hey, I would encourage you to show that video to other people and, and share that, that, yes, bad things happen, but God is there. God bless you all. Wow, what a great message. I hope you guys got something from that. You got encouraged and lifted up. And if you made that decision to receive Jesus today, I want to encourage you to connect with us. Let us know that you're making this decision, whether letting us know in the comment section or sending us a message. Or better so, you can go to this link on the screen, mylifehouse.com slash Jesus, and go to that link and, and uh, let us know that you made this decision. One of our leaders will reach out to you and help you with your walk with Jesus. All right, so we're gonna finish here today, but before we do so, I wanna let you know that we have connect groups starting. We have Bible connect groups that you can join to make new friends and also uh, learn more about God, how you can read the Bible and how to pray and how, and uh, just really join this amazing community uh, that will help you with your walk with Jesus. Also, we have community connect groups where you can share your passion with other people who share the same passion as you. It's really fun. It's a great place to make new friends and just have fun, all right? So uh, what better so to do in this season but make new friends? Come on, join us by simply go to this link on the screen, mylifehouse.com slash connect groups. All right, so have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you guys again next week. And uh, God bless.